Marcus, Marcus, stay with me, buddy. Stay with me. Growing up, there used to be police that would drive through my neighborhood, and it would always be neat to go say hi to them, and they always had Colorado Rockies baseball cards that they would give us. I just really, I love the job. And every day I get to be there for people who are having the worst day, and it's something I enjoy doing. Coming into each shift, you never really know what's gonna happen. Uh, some days we'll have two or three calls that, that officers handle, some days we'll have 20. That was one of the things I really like about police work is just, you never know what you're gonna be doing. We were probably about 45 minutes into the shift and a, just a simple trespass call dropped. Only unwanted party. Harpy's looking on his camera saying there's a CK male that's sitting on his patio. Marcus arrived first and I got there right after him. We both walked up together. From there, we were trying to figure out how to get into the backyard. So I remember stepping out to look at this padlock and it was a combination lock. We announced Denver police and then that was when the blast happened. Okay, cover me. Where are you shot, man? After I returned fire, he took off. There was a momentary, where is he? Officer Floyd was great about seeing where he was at. Look, is that him? Where? 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 Over there, over there. Uh, uh, one person, one person, Charlie. Uh, in the leg. Hey, let's go again. Here. Uh, Slide up this way. We didn't know uh, if there was more than one person, if he was still back there reloading, trying to uh, get another shot off. Stay with me, buddy. You okay? You okay? There was a, a, a moment there after I had applied the tourniquet that he stopped responding. Uh, tourniquet applied. Marcus. Marcus, stay with me, buddy. Stay with me. When you're starting to fall Marcus, asleep and you kind of snap awake, I felt a jolt like that. And I remember looking around and realizing, like, I'm in a driveway. Hey. Sorry, buddy. I got you, okay? Stop the bleeding. Got gotcha. you. Ambulance is here, Marcus, okay? One, two, three. Ugh. All right, buddy. All right. What's going on? Right. Keep breathing, man. I got you, man. Justin, help me up. Being able to see Black for the first time after his recovery was awesome. It was, um, there was a moment there that I thought he might have already died. So just being able to see him walking and talking was great. I've known Marcus for, I mean, better part of a decade now. Seeing a, uh, a good friend like that get injured like that, it was, it was terrifying. And I wanted to do everything that I could in my power to help him. Truly being an officer is assisting not only the community, but assisting your, your fellow officer. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you, all of us want to go home in one piece. And unfortunately, that night, it didn't happen for Josh. We were dispatched to a car accident on I-25. Accident southbound 25 at Colfax. We need to shut down the highway. After a 10-hour shift, I was driving south on I-25 for my 70 and saw this black Cadillac just, I mean, screaming by me on the right side. And the way he was driving, I'm like, he's eventually going to cause an accident. Threw on my, my traffic vest, uh, threw out road flares, got out and inventoried the, the struck vehicle, was doing a tow sheet. The tow truck got there. I was waiting to sign his slip so he could pull that car away, and I woke up at the hospital. Clear on uh, roll by your accident. Some guy lost control. Uh, we got an officer down. And then I saw him lose control, and then uh, hit the Jersey barrier in the middle and fly right across uh, like five lanes of traffic. Hit my police car, hit the car that was being loaded onto the tow truck, and then hit me, sending me 40 feet from where I was standing into the two lanes behind me. I need code and cover and an ambulance code in the highway. Sergeant Jason Burton, who was one of the first ones to me, he got out, saw me laying on the, on the ground, used my radio to call officer down and call for help. 
the timing of when I was driving by as opposed to when he got hit. I mean, if I was two or three minutes behind or had already gone, I would have never known this would happen. I was just doing my job. When you see something like that, you, you have to respond, you have to react. He didn't recognize me at first, and I, I told him, I, I'm the one that, that you found on the highway, and we both kind of like wiped some tears and hugged, and he said he, he was just so glad that, that he was able to see me and that I was walking, because <laughs> it, it was a big deal to be able to, to, to walk again. Words can't describe how grateful I am for what they did to save my life. The risk they put themselves in and, and had me come out on the other end, I don't even know how to thank them. When I arrived at the hospital, my blood pressure was 40 over nothing. I'm guessing another 30 seconds to a minute in the ambulance and I would have just bled out. If it wasn't for the foundation providing the tourniquets, I wouldn't have made it out of that driveway. I don't think any of us would hesitate to do that at all. I mean, we're not paid to get hurt or injured or killed, but it's always something that could be present. But it's still what I choose to do. And you know that your guys have your back 100%. And you know that you would do anything for them. Uh, every day when I put this uniform on, I feel like I am a role model, you know, not only at work, but also when I'm off duty. And I wanna do everything that I can to, to help people.